Hi, and welcome to First Year Microeconomics. So far, we've looked at an individual person's demand curve. Just to remind you of a definition, a person's demand curve for a product, and our product here is apples, a person's demand curve for a product shows, given the price, note that it's got our price-taking assumption built in, given the price of a product, how much of the product that person would like to buy, Remember, the demand curve tells you what you would plan to do or what you would like to do, not what you may be able to achieve. How much of that product a person would like to buy, holding all other relevant factors fixed. And in the last presentation, we looked at what happened to demand when we changed those other factors, such as the price of other goods and the person's income. Now, the individual demand curve is fine, except what we want to do is answer our question where do prices come from? To do that, we can't really look just at one Apple buyer. We need to somehow bring all Apple buyers together. To do that, we need to look at the market demand curve for apples. Now, the market demand curve is simply given by the horizontal sum of the individual demand curves. That may sound complex, but actually it is really, really simple. If you understand what the demand curve is for an individual, the market demand curve is just a very simple extension. Let me give you the definition of a market demand curve. For a given price, the market demand curve tells us the amount in total of the product that all people would like to buy, holding everything else fixed. Let's highlight a couple of points here. First, our market demand curve has our price-taking assumption built in. It assumes that all buyers in the market take the price as given and ask, given the price, how much would all of those people in total like to buy? So we're looking now at the total amount of the product that all people would like to buy. And again, we're holding everything else fixed. Just as with an individual demand curve, if the price of our product, such as apples, changes, we will shift along the demand curve. If anything else changes, for example, the income level of people, the price of some other goods, such as the price of bananas or pears or ice cream, people's expectations, if I read in the newspaper that apples cures cancer, change any of those other things and that will shift the market demand curve. So, Let's start deriving our market demand curve. Our market's going to be very simple. It's going to have two people in it. It's going to include Jackie, who we've already met, and it's also going to include Matt. Now we know what Jackie's demand curve looks like. Remember, if the price of apples is $12 or more, she doesn't want to buy any apples. If the price of apples is, say, $9 per kilo, then Jackie would like to buy four kilograms of apples, and if the price of apples is, say, four dollars per kilogram, Jackie would like to buy five and a half kilograms of apples, and so on. And then we can join up all of these points, and we get Jackie's demand curve for apples. So this blue downward sloping demand curve is just Jackie's demand curve that we've seen before. Now, what about Matt's demand curve? Well, let's suppose that Matt doesn't like apples as much as Jackie, so if the price of apples is $10 or more per kilogram, he doesn't want to buy any apples. If the price of apples is only $9 per kilogram, he'll buy some apples, but like he said, we, he doesn't really like apples that much, so he may only want to buy one and a half kilograms per week. And even if the price of apples drops all the way down to $4 per kilogram, well, Matt may only want to buy two and a half kilograms per week. So we've got three points now on Matt's individual demand curve for apples. We can join those points up with all the other points and get Matt's individual demand curve for apples. So the blue downward sloping curve is Matt's demand curve for apples. How do we get the market demand curve? Let's put Jackie's demand curve back on. It's the dark blue line here. And let's ask a simple question. Given the price of apples and holding everything else constant, given the price of apples, how many apples in total would Matt and Jackie like to buy? Well, let's start off with the price of $12. Clearly, neither Jackie or Matt want to buy any apples, 
if the price of apples is above $12. So we have a point on our market demand curve up here at 12 and 0. What about if the price is above $10 a kilo? Well, notice that at any price above $10 per kilogram, the only person buying apples is Jackie. Matt's not buying any apples. So initially, the market demand curve is just the same as Jackie's demand curve for any price of apples above $10 per kilogram. Jackie's the only person actually buying. But what about as the price comes down? Let's look at the price of, say, $9 per kilogram. Notice at that price that Matt wants 1.5 kilograms of apples, and Jackie would like to buy 4 kilograms of apples. So if the price of apples is $9 per kilogram, the total amount of apples demanded by the market, or the market demand, is going to be 4 that Jackie wants, the 1.5 that Matt wants, or in other words, 5.5 kilograms of apples. So we can show that by coming across at our price of $9 and going down to 5.5 kilograms. And so we've got another point on our market demand curve. What about if we change the price further and go down to $4 per kilogram? Well, at $4 per kilogram, notice that uh, Matt would like to buy 2.5 kilograms of apples. Jackie would like to buy 5.5 kilograms of apples. So in total, they would like 2.5 plus 5.5, 8 kilograms of apples altogether. So we get another point on the market demand curve where the price of apples is $4 a kilo and market demand is $8 a kilogram. Now we could obviously continue this. If we did, we'd get a whole bunch of points. We'd get those points by picking a price and adding up the quantity that Jackie would like and the quantity that Matt would like. And we'd get a market demand curve by joining up all of those points. So the yellow line here is the market demand curve for apples. A couple of things to notice. If only one person's buying apples, then the market demand curve is the same as that person's individual demand curve. But if you've got more than one person buying apples, so Matt and Jackie would both like to buy apples at a given price, then the market demand curve is going to be to the right of the individual demand curves. And in general, it's going to be flatter than the individual demand curves. Well, now that we've got market demand, we can move on to the second element of our perfectly competitive market model, that is supply.